If you want instant access to new videos as they're uploaded, then please click on the subscribe button. Also, don't forget to comment on the videos. And if you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, visit BetAngel.com today and download a free trial. So we're pretty much at Ascot now. And um, I did a video on it last year. Uh, talked through a couple of things. And we've got the US Open Golf next week as well. It's a really big week next week. If this week goes well, I could probably do next week what I'll do in a normal month. So I'd do four times as much as I would normally do. So it's a big week. And as we know, Ascot is always going to be big anyway. So uh, that goes without saying pretty much so. But just how big is Ascot and how does it compare to other meetings? Well, when you look at a Cheltenham and an Ascot, you would tend to parallel them in a similar manner because Cheltenham is the big jumps meeting of the year and Ascot is the big flat meeting of the year. There are other meetings around, but obviously Ascot stands out. And it runs from Tuesday to Saturday, you know, really good quality racing, significant amounts of it. And you would expect uh, it to be one of the best meetings of the year, which is exactly what it is. But when you look at comparing uh, a Cheltenham and an Ascot, there are a number of differences between them. Obviously, Cheltenham runs from Tuesday to Friday. Ascot runs from Tuesday to Saturday. Curiously enough, the Saturday at Ascot tends to be one of the weaker days of the week. Um, and it's actually the rest of the week. Tuesday, uh, traditionally for me, has been a strong day and has had very high turnover and so on. And Saturday has always been the weakest day. So that's interesting. But if you actually look at the uh, turnover of individual races at these two meetings, you find that it's... Um, if you look at 2005 Cheltenham, it turned over about 3.7 million per race. And if you look at the average at Ascot, it's about 2 million. Um, so there is a, a bit of a difference there between the turnover. And what you tend to find is that the feature uh, races obviously take a lot of money and then they're topped and tailed with slightly lower quality affairs. But they're still pretty, uh, pretty big in itself. Um, average turnover or the turnover that we've, we've seen in previous years is about 64 million. Uh, but it was interesting to note that last year I only did 58 million. Uh, so that was interesting to see. And when you look at the volatility that you expect to see from a trading perspective at Ascot, it tends to parallel pretty much what you would see at a Cheltenham. But we have noticed over the years that it's getting slightly more volatile as time goes on. Now, there will be a lot of money around at Ascot. If you're going to face the same problem that you did at Cheltenham and that the market's absolutely stuffed full of money. But like I hinted at Cheltenham, BetDAC is a really good place to go for these big meetings because the, the balance between liquidity and volume is just about right. Now, I can never tell every year exactly how it's going to be, so fingers crossed that it's going to be good this year. But I would imagine that the market's going to be fairly flush with money, and I imagine that you probably would be able to do quite well on BetDAC as well as Betfair at um, Ascot. So if you traditionally traded on Betfair and found it really difficult, give BetDAC a try. And uh, what I will be doing is I'll be using both because I'll try and make the best out of both worlds and have an absolutely stupendous week. Um, so I will be using both and trying to do the best of everything on both exchanges uh, simply because I can. I'm going to set up a couple of extra screens as well because I want to run loads of stuff and do the best I can. I've been prepping for Ascot for about sort of 10 days or so. So I'm pretty sure that I know what I'm expecting to see and what I will do about it when I actually get to see it. Uh, but I'm pretty optimistic uh, based upon the fact that Cheltenham and Aintree traded well and I got a good result from the Derby and so on and so forth. So I'm reasonably optimistic that uh, Ascot Week should be pretty good. And I think you should probably be optimistic as well. So it's, you know, it's the peak of the year. It will feel very different from all of your day-to-day -day markets, but it's a good opportunity to learn how to trade a high volume market uh, with very good quality races. So I suggest you must take up that opportunity and do the best that you can. And also use both exchanges, because I think both are perfectly viable during a week like uh, Ascot. And I imagine you'd probably better get favorable results out of both. I know I've got strategies, two or three strategies that should work on either, and I'll be using the Tuesday in the early part of the week to really figure out where my head is at and what I want to do, and then really start pushing towards the end of the week to get a good total. So hopefully those notes give me a bit of a steer on that, and I uh, hope you have a really good Ascot. If you're interested in learning more about BetAngel, visit BetAngel.com and download a free trial today.